I'm Andrea Cleffy. Coming up next on Channel 2 News at 5 o'clock, an amazing discovery about the origin of man. And a popular child restraint seat is on the recall list. Join Sylvia and me next. You're watching WBRZ Channel 2 News on your side. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us on this Monday. I would like to welcome my full-fledged partner now at 5 o'clock, Sylvia Weatherspoon. Thanks, Annie. George Ryan is joining Andrea at 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And, Andrea, of course, it is absolutely a pleasure to be here, not only for the medical segments, but also now for the entire show. We're going to have a lot of fun. Oh, absolutely. So we hope you watch us. We really plan on having a lot of fun. We are the new divas of television, <laughs> right? Funky divas. Oh, okay. <laughs> Funky divas at 5. There you go. Well, we begin this evening, though, on a serious note. The Cuban detainees involved in the St. Martin Parish jail hostage crisis, they may be back in Cuba as we speak. Reporters in Alexandria saw two heavily guarded immigration and naturalization vans at that city's airport, and they also saw two unidentified men in handcuffs board a jet. INS officials will not confirm those reports, though. Meanwhile, some local parish prisons housing Cuban inmates, like the one in Point Capi, are stepping up security. The new measures come in the wake of last week's standoff involving Cuban detainees. The only thing we can do, like I said, is, is step up security and uh, not take any chances. But if any time you're housing any type of inmates, there's always a possibility of it happening. Senator John Bro is calling for a change in the nation's deportation policy. Bro says taxpayers should not pay to jail Cuban detainees who have already served their sentences. A space heater is being blamed for a blaze this morning that heavily damaged a Baton Rouge home. Now, firemen say the blaze on Mohican Street was apparently caused by a gas heater in a bathroom. Investigators don't know whether the heater malfunctioned or whether some dogs that were in the bathroom dragged something near the heater. Two people escaped without injury. However, a dog and three puppies died in that blaze. We have some tips for those of you who count on space heaters to keep you warm in the winter. Firemen say you should keep all combustibles at least three feet away from your heater. You should never leave the room unattended with children or pets. Always plug your electric heaters directly into the wall. Do not use extension cords. They may not be strong enough to handle the current for the heater. Make sure technicians check your gas heaters each year and always have working smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors in your home. Good news for holiday travelers passing through Livingston Parish on Interstate 12. Highway officials have discontinued construction in both the east and westbound lanes until January 4th because of the expected holiday traffic. At that time, the resurfacing work will resume. That work will continue until the end of February. Now let's take a look at the traffic now, right? Mm -hmm. And this is uh, I-12, I-10. Tell me where this is. Help me out. I can't. There we go. I-10 I College, College, College Drive. That's okay. right. Okay, boy, look at that. And obviously, it's raining out there. Very slippery situation. Hazardous conditions, for sure. I'm trying to just... Which uh, one, obviously, one side of the traffic, the eastbound is very, very busy. The westbound, it looks fine. Well, in other news, a major victory for gay couples in Vermont. The state Supreme Court has ruled that gay couples have to get the same benefits and the same protections that opposite-sex married couples get. State lawmakers will decide whether that happens through a formal marriage or through a system of domestic partnerships. This is one of the most powerful rulings yet on behalf of gay rights. Country music has lost one of its pioneers. Hank Snow has died at the age of 85. During his heyday in the 1950s and 60s, he had such hits as I'm Moving On, I Don't Hurt Anymore, and Golden Rocket. In all, Snow recorded more than 40 songs that made the top 10 on the country charts. He sold 70 million records. An amazing discovery in South Africa. It is the first complete hand and arm from a skeleton of a 3,300,000-year-old ape man. It marks the first time scientists can study the way the hands and arms functioned on one of the first species of man. The discovery comes a year after archaeologists found the skull and skeleton of the same ape man in a cave outside Johannesburg. Coming up tonight at 6 o'clock on Channel 2 News, internet crime coming in, into your home. George tells you more from the newsroom. George? Andrea, anyone with a computer has to be aware of criminals on the internet. And tonight at 6, the state's attorney general says he's laying the groundwork to go after online crime. And if you're counting the days until you jump on the plane to Grandma's house, we'll tell you how it looks for travel. That and more coming your way tonight. On Channel 2 News at 6, back now, though, to those daring divas at 5. Okay, George, thanks a lot. And let's go to Pat now for a quick check of your first forecast.
Well, am I glad I'm not in that diva deal? <laughs> we have a wet night tonight. Periods of rain and showers, maybe some claps of thunder. We're going to start off with Doppler storm track radar. And you can see the scope lit up. An awful lot of shower activity remaining in the area tonight, overnight, and even into daybreak. Now, the temperature is going to remain well above the freeze mark, so liquid precipitation here. However, there is a travel advisory posted in the extreme northeastern portions of Louisiana. So let's take a look at our WeatherNet 2 site. Right now at Our Lady Mercy School, moisture all throughout the atmosphere, completely saturated, 100% relative humidity, 51 degrees on the temp and the pressure at 30.05. Winds coming into the north-northeast, and they'll start to pick up a little bit. So wet and rainy and showery tonight, maybe a little bit of thunder. Chilly and windy in Tuesday, early rain, then a clear off. Now look at the low tonight, 42. Guess what the high is tomorrow? 42. We will not budge off that mark over the next 24 hours. So when we come back, we'll sort out more weather for you and take you into the weekend. Christmas Eve coming up. Now back to, what you guys call yourselves? We're the divas. We're the Pat, divas. And, and you're, you're the, the divo. Divo. Oh, I can go with that. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Pat. Well, no word yet on what it will mean for patients, but three major pharmaceutical companies have announced a merger. Pharmacia, Upjohn, and Monsanto. The $23 billion merger creates the world's 11th largest pharmaceutical company. Drug companies have been under pressure to merge if they try to finance research on blockbuster drugs. Degenerative joint disease or osteoarthritis is painful, debilitating, and sometimes requires surgery. In fact, more than 250,000 Americans need hip replacement surgery each year. But often the plastic implant wears out within 10 to 15 years. Now doctors are working with a new metal implant. A cup with a metal lining is inserted into the pelvic socket. Then the top of the thigh bone is replaced with a metal ball mounted on a long stem. The tr traditional implant has the problem of metal against polyethylene plastic. And the polyethylene over time wears away. Dr. Steinman says the new implant should last from 20 to 30 years, which means patients may avoid a second surgery. Well, coming up next, are you planning a Christmas or a New Year's get together? We're gonna give you some tips on how much food and drink you're gonna need. Also ahead, sheriff's deputies make rounds to help spread Christmas cheer. And a popular child restraint seat is on the recall list. We'll tell you which one. This is, of course, the party, party season. And so with us to offer some great suggestions is cookbook author and a personal friend of mine, Holly Clay. We're glad you're with us this afternoon. Oh, I'm delighted to. Holly, I have to say, I've been to a few of the parties, parties at her house. She always gives a wonderful party, so you're a perfect person to ask questions about giving parties. What do you need to think about when you decide to give a party besides stressing out? Right, I think that's what most people think about. Oh my God, is that my right. house? But I think before we begin, you have to think about how many people are coming. And the way to do that is don't count people you invited because if you're sending out our invitations, mm -hmm. you want to multiply it by two. Mm -hmm. And then probably 55 to 65 percent of those people will show. Think about how long your party's going to be, the time of day it is, what type of people are coming. Are they young that tend to drink a lot? Are mm -hmm. they heavy eaters? So you want to sort of understand who's going to be there so you can plan accordingly. And I guess the time of the day has a lot to do with it because if you have certain people at dinner hours, then they may eat heavier than if you had them maybe you know, early afternoon for cookies and tea or whatever it is that you want to do. Absolutely. And you know, when you're invited to a cocktail party, or I know when people are coming to my house, they plan to eat. I'm not one of right. those that just tastes. So when you're planning your food, you want to probably plan maybe around 15 pieces of food or bites of food per person. Now, remember, this is an average, let's say, from a 7 to 10 prime time where mm -hmm. you're all hungry, or like a pound of food. You could even figure it that way per person because you want to have enough. And on sweets, maybe two and a half pieces of uh, little tidbits or something per person. So you get a general, uh, you know, so you have a little, and another thing to remember too, Annie, is for carbohydrates. Those mm -hmm. are good fillers or, you know, if, um, if you're drinking, if there's heavy drinkers, mm -hmm. you might want to have, and also they're a little more economical, like pastas or yeah. jambalaya, and those aren't as expensive and will, you know, sort of round out your whole menu. How do you plan for having enough alcohol if you're going to be serving alcohol at a party? Well, you want to have um, the basis for like, and this again is, we're sort of just generalizing, maybe right. four drinks per person in a three hour period. I might have one or two glasses of wine, maybe somebody else will have that. And then there's plenty of people that don't drink as well, right. today, and we're much more conscious of that. Uh, when, you're when you're buying uh, your wine, you want to figure you'll get about 
five to six glasses per person. A liter of liquor will s serve you about 24 shots. Mm -hmm. um, and it's what you want to do too is figure about three glasses per person. You know, just because mm -hmm. you don't want to say each person gets one glass because they tend to do different glasses. Uh, and I think mm -hmm. something to remember is ice. How many times mm -hmm. have we all run out ice of ice? And there's nothing major. more aggravating than having to stop or send someone for ice. So this is a little hint. Usually plan on like a pound of ice per person. Mm -hmm. So That's you'll have enough. It's cheap and you can store oh, yeah. it and you sure you don't want the best deal to bring to a party if you know if you have to bring some. Right. I bring my ice. I think ice in the or, or, or napkins, yeah. whatever. What about, I know in some of your cookbooks you have some really good ideas about preparing in advance. There, there are a number of things you can put prepare in advance and what put in a freezer or put in your refrigerator right. or whatever. And, and I think that's an important key. You want to prepare as much as you can in advance. Uh, a lot of spreads. I have, uh, you know, some great dips and spreads, and also mm -hmm. those are health conscious as well. Prepare them ahead of time, and they serve a crowd. And also, dips and spreads tend to go a little further, so you can get by with a uh, little less food. Mm -hmm. uh, anything you can buy ahead of time and freeze or prepare ahead of time, stick it in there. Uh, the point is, you don't want to be stressed out. You want to be able to entertain and have a good time. And if you're like me, you're just delighted you're invited somewhere. That's right. Uh, it, so yeah, people, I think it's gotten much more laid back than maybe when our parents were, were going oh, to yeah. parties. And the, what about caterers? A lot of people are using uh, prepared food from a caterer, I guess. And is that okay? Hey, it, it, it's very much okay. And I think that's something important. I just read in Cooking Light Magazine in a uh, 1999 survey, 60% of the dinner hosts buy prepared food. So that's very acceptable. I think you go to your favorite caterer and buy prepared food or supplement your menu. If you have something right. that you enjoy preparing and then you're comfortable with it, stuff. and add, and that takes a lot of pressure off. Boy, you don't it. have to do it all. Does and it it's ever. okay. I said it's okay. Well, if you said it's okay, <laughs> it's okay. I appreciate you coming by, Holly. Thank you very much. Well, and have I, a Merry Christmas. I hope, and next week I'm going to give you some easy dips to make. Okay. So and the we'll best to your family as well. So okay. Here. Thanks, Holly. And welcome, Sylvia. Thank you, Holly. I'll be a diva with y'all. I'm not a diva with him. No, we, 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 no, we don't want diva. Just Thanks, Holly. <laughs> well, holiday help of a different kind has the Sheriff's Department busy. These men and women are volunteering their time to help deliver Christmas toys to needy children. Christmas Crusade for Children is setting records this year, giving toys and gifts to more than 8,000 children. Today, Sheriff's deputies wrap and sorted gifts. This is the time of the year where uh, we should at least show kids that we do love them, that we care about them, and Christmas is the time of the year that everybody's supposed to be happy. I mean, we like to see them happy all the time, but particularly at Christmas time. The deputies will be delivering them to needy families in the next few days. Well, you may want to pull out your rain and overcoats. Pat's forecasting some cold, wet weather ahead. Yeah, it's yucky out there. And later, Lewis Miller will join us to answer your telephone calls. So stay inside, stay by the phone, call us. We'll be right back. To Your Health is brought to you by the Oxner Clinic of Baton Rouge. Hi, I'm Sergeant Donald Renner, stationed at Coonsan Air Base, Coonsan, Korea. I'd like to extend a warm holiday greeting to my mother, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Okay, thank you. You know, Holly Clegg was just in talking about giving parties, but last Saturday night, this past Saturday night, Pat Singleton gave the best newsroom oh Christmas God. party. Supposed to be we a want to thank you. Party. It yeah. was great, Pat. He pulled out, you know, he has a fire truck. He pulled out the fire truck. Jeez, Everybody loaded up. Singing, Carol. 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 Singing, so look for some daybreak sprinkles, and you might see a little clearing late in the day. But we also stand by for the cold, cold air to zip on in here. Small craft advisory on the coast, north winds at 20 to 25 knots. Your sea, 7 to 9 feet. There's your PM and AM high and low tides. Grand out of Bear Terry Pass. So the Amid River right now at 15.1 from the recent rains. It'll continue to climb. Mississippi River at 9.5, up 1.1. Chapelai at 5.9. Travel advisory was in effect, I updated this, northeastern portions of Louisiana, sections of eastern Arkansas and north central Mississippi are under the gun there for this travel advisory as there's a potential of some slick travel primarily later tonight and tomorrow there. Now Tuesday's highs, once again here's Tuesday's highs projecting us once again to be on the fringe between about 39 and 42, but notice once again where that cold air is dive bombing is taking us to 26 as we roll into Wednesday morning. Temperatures right now, 28 in Amarillo, 36 Oklahoma City, 28 in Wichita, 26 in St. Louis, 41 in Little Rock, and 52 degrees in Brownsville, Texas. So behind this next front, 
you're going to notice a big batch of chilly air zipping on in. Statewide, warmest spots, New Orleans at 55. Coolest spots, 46 in Monroe. And once again, those extreme northeast parishes of Louisiana are under that travel advisory over the next 24 hours. A look now to the cloud cover, and boy, it continued to stack up and build up from about 10 o'clock this morning till now. And you see this wide area of cloud cover extending to the Gulf of Mexico. And just south of Galveston, Houston, and Lake Charles, that's where the low is indicated, and it'll continue to ride right along the northern sections of the Gulf of Mexico. Here's the Doppler site out of Lake Charles. You can see the scattering rain embedded in that, the yellowish areas, indicating some heavier shower activity. This is the Doppler site out of Shreveport. Most of the action, once again, east and southeast. Back to Tyler and Texarkana, they're starting to clear off some, but all of this rain continuing to push north and northeast out of New Orleans, again, through Biloxi. That'll uh, continue to be the deal. So watch this front roll through. Here's the load a little track that way. Cold air comes in, and any time you get into this scenario, it's the timing. As the rain ends, temperature drops, and that'll happen to us. So we don't anticipate any rough weather as far as any uh, tricky travel out there. So for tonight, we continue to find our readings in the 40s, but those 30s will continue to be across northern portions of the state. So some wet weather tonight, some rain, some showers, breezy, cold, and 42 degrees. And for the morning drive, and you head out, anticipate the daybreak rain to end by about 8 o'clock. Cloudy, cold, clearing. So 42 degrees a high, down to 28 tomorrow night into Wednesday. 46 and 31, your readings on Wednesday. 52 and 34 on Thursday. And then Friday, Christmas Eve, we anticipate temperature only go to about 54. Here's your salute board. Fred Martin celebrating a birthday. Sammy Forbes, 82 years young. John Gerald, 84. And Warren Munson, 90. On the salute board, Tommy and Leola Perkins, they're celebrating 50 years of marriage. Here's our WeatherNet 2 site. Checking the reading around D.C. Reeves Elementary School, it's 55 degrees, 99 percent relative humidity. So, if you're out and about tonight, take it slow. A lot of rain out there, but you shouldn't have any problems on the highways and byways. Okay, Pat, thanks a lot. Still ahead, Christmas at the White House with the Clintons. But Lewis Miller is up next to answer your gardening questions. The number to call: 336-2321. 336-2321. Well, it is not exactly the kind of weather to get out and get much done in the garden or the yard, but some of you may have noticed some problems before those clouds rolled in. Lewis Miller is here to answer your phone calls. Hey, Lewis. Hey, good afternoon. Our first caller is Johnny from Baton Rouge. Go ahead with your question. Johnny, did we lose you? I'm here. Oh, go ahead, John. Uh, yes, my question deals with uh, citrus trees. We have several different types in the yard. Right. And uh, this year's crop... Uh, Got up about half dollar size, and they got some sort of scale, a brownish gray looking scale over them, mm -hmm. and they sw uh, just swiveled up and fell off the bushes. What can mm. we do to prevent that next year? Well, uh, what you're going to need to do is spray to re prevent it, and what you want to look for is a fungicide that's labeled for citrus scab. Uh, some of the things that you might be able to use would be like Maneb or Dacanil or even Fungaway. Check that label, spray well ahead of time, uh, like right after bloom and that way you ought to be able to avoid the problem. Our next caller is Debbie. Go ahead with your question. Hi, this is Debbie Norris, Roger from Jackson. Hi, Debbie. I got a plant from my mother-in-law, mm -hmm. and it's leaking teardrops on the end of the leaves. Mm -hmm. I've never had this to happen before. Can okay. you tell me the problem? Well, probably what you have on there are some insects. Now, that, or not insects specifically, but mites. Mites are very, very tiny. You won't be able to see them just by looking underneath the leaf, but the leaves should not be dripping um, dripping water. What's happening is the insects are feeding on the leaf and the little sap uh, that, they, that runs out of the leaf after they pull their mouth away from the plant is running down to the tip end of the leaf. Uh, so I would take a white sheet of paper, put up underneath the foliage and thump it. And if you, you have mites on there, you'll see them running around on the white sheet of paper. You can spray with an indoor plant insecticide and miticide and that should take care of it. All right, from Debbie to Dale from Prairieville, go ahead with your question. Yeah, Lewis. Hi, Dale. Are you? Good. Look, I have a uh, pecan tree that's about, oh, 12, 15 years old. Mm -hmm. And for the first time this past year, I got those darn old, look like spider, spider webs, box caterpillars, whatever you want to call them. Right. What's the best way to get rid of those things? Well, actually, unless you have a very small tree and you have lots of the caterpillars building the webs, uh, I wouldn't, wouldn't worry about it. Uh, they found that the damage caused by those web worms is fairly insignificant as far as the tree goes, its general health, and also uh, to your yield. So the thing to do is to, uh, nothing about it. 
uh, unless you have, like I say, a really bad problem. And once your tree gets up some size, then it'd be almost impossible to spray. So rest assured, it's not going to bother your tree. All right, Lewis, and we have time for one more caller. Okay. Sally from Walker, go ahead with your question. Yes, uh, I have about a year old poinsettia bush that mm -hmm. I brought in. It's in a pot plant mm -hmm. for, the, for the cold weather. Right. And I was wondering, is it going to turn red inside, or is it just the new leaves are going to be red? Well, you should get some uh, red in the new growth, I would expect, probably not until after Christmas. One of the things that, that happens, if you just brought it in, it should have gotten used to longer nights by now. And typically, our poinsettia is here uh, with left to natural light will uh, turn red, but after the season. You'll still be able to enjoy it, though. All right. Thanks to everyone for your calls, Lewis. Never enough time, but it's always very informative. Thank you very much, sure. Sylvia. Well, coming up next, a popular child restraint seat is on the recall list. You might want to grab a pen to take a phone number. Looking ahead now to tomorrow's newscast, thousands of women have a procedure called a tubal ligation to prevent another pregnancy. Well, tomorrow we'll look at a new technique that helps doctors decide whether they can successfully undo the procedure. And the temperature is expected to take a sharp drop tomorrow. Lewis Miller will have tips on protecting your plant. That's tomorrow at 5. Join us then. More than 754,000 infant car seats are being recalled for repair. The feds say the handle of the Colcraft Enterprises seats can change position when it is being used as an infant carrier, causing the seat to rotate and the baby to fall out. The Consumer Product Safety Commission reports 42 injuries because of this defect. At least one infant has suffered a skull fracture and two have suffered concussions. And there have been more than 3,000 reports of handle-related problems. So to get a free repair kit, you can call Colcraft toll-free the number is 1-877-776-2609. Again, the number you see there, 877-776-2609. On the sights and sounds of Christmas at the White House today, President Clinton read Twas the Night Before Christmas to dozens of kids, and the kids sang carols to the President and First Lady Hillary Clinton. Among the carols, a new version of the 12 Days of Christmas that included a line hoping for a world where all people are free. Never heard that one. That would be good. Wouldn't that be wonderful? It would be. Well, I'll see you at 6, and be sure to join Sylvia and me tomorrow at 5. Thanks for watching Channel 2. Locally owned and operated for more than 44 years.